Hello everybody, before this video begins, I wish to apologize for the audio quality. I did not do a very good job editing this interview. We were both recording onto the same audio track, and so because of that, I had to go in and try and adjust each of our microphone gains to match accordingly, and it didn't turn out as well as I wanted it to. Uh, regardless though, I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I want to again give a big thank you to Katie Lee for agreeing to uh, do this video. There will be a behind-the-scenes look at an animation that I did for Katie Lee at the end of the video if you would like to stick around for that. And the full animation will be going up on her Patreon, um, I believe on July 4th. Uh, so once again, uh, the link for that will be in the description down below. And as always, have a great day. Hi everybody, my name is Joel. Um, welcome to Movie Force. I am here today with the esteemed voice actress Katie Lee. Um, who some of you might know for her work on shows like Totally Spies and Gummy Bears, as well as Muppet Babies and Adventures in Odyssey. Um, how are you today, Katie? Hi, Joel. I'm so happy to meet you face to face. Oh, thank you. You have been a huge asset for me and my YouTube channel. People don't know it yet. It's not just a YouTube channel. Our Patreon-supported yeah. show with some content on YouTube. Crew of One makes me I have to I have to have, make sure I say all the proper information because yeah 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 it's great to meet you. Um, so Katie runs a YouTube channel and Patreon supported show called Tell You Later. Uh, tell the link, ya later. Tell ya later. My apologies. Uh, <laughs> the link to, the link to that will be down in the description below. Um, but today we have a series of eleven questions that we're going to be asking Katie. Um, a couple of them are from. Uh, other people, um, well, like one other person, um, but uh, we'll start with the first question here. So, Katie, how did you first begin your career in the voice acting industry? Um, how did I begin it? I I made a demo and I got an agent. Uh, I was living in San Francisco. I mean, people gave me the idea and I thought maybe I could make some extra money. and um, And that's what I did. So making a demo today is like a lot, I, I imagine it's a lot easier today than it would be like back. Um... Yeah, I think so, because I had to find somebody to help me. I mean, you still have to do that. Find somebody yeah. to help you put it together. And, and then, you know, I had to go to the recording studio. And now it's kind of optional. If you have your own studio at home, you can record stuff and people can put it together for you remotely. It's it's amazing, like, how far technology has come that you can just kind of, like, do that now. Like, you don't have oh, to Joel. set up appointments. and. Yes, my my first demo was on a reel-to-reel -reel tape. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> so, yeah, we have come a long way. So, is reel-to-reel, -reel, is that kind of like, uh, like, cassette tape or, like, 8-track? or before that. Oh, shoot, okay. It's like, have you ever seen a movie reel? Yeah, I have. Well, that's how you know, or old reel-to-reel -reel recorders, you know, you got... Oh. Yeah, it's like cassette. Actually, it's the same basic principle as cassette, except it wasn't in a contained space, and it was a lot bigger. So you'd have to have a reel-to-reel -reel player to put the reel on, thread it. Well, you'd go this way, left to right, thread it, put it in an empty reel, and hear it played that way. Oh, wow. Um... <laughs> Yeah, that that's that's crazy. Like I I I I grew up with like cassette and VHS, but like I like it's weird to think that there's still stuff that came even before that. Oh yeah. Um, well, Thomas Edison, right? He made the yeah. black cylinder. Uh our, <laughs> that's true. I actually I actually went over um I got to go visit Thomas Edison's like workshop. Oh, um it's in yeah, it's in a museum now. I think it's called the Henry Ford Museum. Mm -hmm. Um and so there's this town where you can go and visit like Thomas Edison's workshop and there's like a bunch of just like canisters of chemicals and stuff lining the wall and you can find a copy of the wax cylinder. It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's the history of sound recording is fascinating. Here's the next question. Over the years, you've played some iconic characters, uh, including Fizzy from the first My Little Pony series, uh, Alex from Totally Spies and Honker from Darkwing Duck. Uh, has the experience working with each studio differed in conduct or protocol? And what has been your favorite studio to work with so far? Well, to be honest, most of that work that 
you mentioned, well, no, no, Gummy Bears is Disney. But the other, I did a lot of work at Marvel Studios, Dungeons and Dragons being the second one. I did a show called Pandemonium that nobody knows, and we did uh, Dungeons and Dragons, which I'm excited I get to be on. It's our 40th anniversary this year. I'm going to do a panel at San Diego Comic Con for that. Uh, that was Marvel. My Little Pony was at Marvel. Muppet Babies was at Marvel. So, and a couple of the shows I had the same director. So it was all, you know, pretty much all the same. You show up at the studio and everybody reads their script and records. We all used to work together. Gummy Bears was really fun at Disney because it was, uh, uh, I mean, there was a lot of stars in the, in the show and people that I grew up listening to. So I was pretty excited to work on that. But even when we did, um... Dungeons and Dragons. We had some TV stars on the show. That, oh, really? Uh, yeah, because I, yeah, I was only doing voice, but Willie Ames played a character, and Donnie Most from Happy Days, Adam Rich. He was in a show with Willie Ames called <clears throat> Eight Is Enough. So uh, that was pretty neat. Um, but a lot of times you work with you know a lot of the same actors, or we used to. So. Yeah, it's pretty much the same if you're lucky enough to be part of the in crowd. And I've always like a, I feel like I've always been on the fringe of the in crowd. Like I know so many wonderful people, and I was never a superstar voice actor, but I got to be there with everybody, and that's pretty wonderful. That's really cool. Your longest and still ongoing role has been as the voice of Connie Kendall in Adventures in Odyssey. Uh, which is one of America's longest running audio drama programs for people who don't know. Um, how has Connie evolved or changed uh, over the past 36 years? <laughs> well, she's kind of changed like I have, except a lot s slower, faster, maybe faster, because it's, it's been 36 years for me, but in her life, not 36 years. So maybe she's gone through some changes a little bit faster than I have. Um, you know, she's grown from, you know, before getting her driver's license to, you know, taking care of her sister who's in high school. So she's matured. I guess that's all. I mean, matured, you know, the, like the series has always like focused as a whole on like the, like arc of both Connie and also Eugene. Mm -hmm. Um, cause like the audience has just kind of like grown up alongside these characters and that's been really cool to witness. Um, yeah, yeah, we were like, uh, Will and I worked, Will Ryan who played Eugene, <clears throat> we worked on so many things together. Uh, 40 years we worked together on various projects. Dumbo Circus, we worked together. Gummy Bears, he was in Gummy Bears as well. Uh, Odyssey um, and other things we did. Uh, Teddy Ruxman, um with a toy we worked on together and some uh, there was a video we did um yeah a lot of things Hedy Ruxpin that was the like the bear you would put like the tape in the back of it right yeah he was the voice of the caterpillar oh really and I did Princess Arusia's voice but not for the cartoon they went to Canada to do that and Rusi Taylor did that I recall there being like a live action pilot of some sort. Was that yeah. the one you guys worked on? Yeah, if you watch it, I play Princess Arusia and he plays my brother, Aaron. But he also was the grub, Grubby, the Caterpillar's voice. And other things like the bad guys. And, you know, we all did multiple voices for stuff back then. And still do. And he so helped put the Tell You Later show on the map with me. He was my co-host. Which, the Tell You Later show, that's been running for about, like, what, two or three years now? Yeah, yeah. Since the beginning of 2020. So was that a thing that you guys, like, decided to do, like, just, like, because, you know, it was the pandemic and, like, you know, wanting to find a project to keep yourself occupied? Yeah, um, pretty, pretty much. My husband thought it would be fun. We had, we wrote a book together called Adventures in Oddity. Um, which is available in paperback on Amazon and autographed. I have one autographed copy that he signed still left. Um, but, uh, and then we recorded the audio version and then we did, we had a bonus chapters. We added bonus chapters and recorded that as a video 
a book. <laughs> they call it a video book because we were reading it, but you yeah, know, kind of not exactly verbatim. And so once we did that, we thought well, that was fun. And um, yeah, and and because of the pandemic, his will would come down to my house to do cameos and stuff for people. So he said we were in the same safe bubble because we've mm -hmm. been around each other. So yeah, he he felt comfortable coming here, and that's when we started doing "Tell You Later." Um, you mentioned that you worked together on uh, Dumbo's Flying Circus. Um, uh, Hal Smith and Walker Edmonston, who were also in Adventures in Odyssey, they were also in Dumbo, right? Yep. Um, so were there any, for, like from what I can tell, it, it was a live action television show uh, involving a lot of heavy puppets and set pieces. Mm -hmm. uh, you were the voice of Dumbo. Uh, did you work as a pup puppeteer as no, well as no, voice we actors? No, the voice. We recorded the voices separately, and then all the the other stuff. It was animatronics, kind of like Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, okay. But it was they would play the tracks that were programmed to the different heads, so those mouths would move. But there were actors inside the costumes, and that's how they they did that. Same people who did Welcome to Pooh Corner. That, and was, that another... was for the Disney Channel. So, I guess the two main studios I've worked for are Marvel and Disney. It's interesting how like all like all these actors like that have done Adventures in Odyssey as well. Like you've all sort of been in this tight knit circle where you've like all worked on projects together outside of Adventures in Odyssey. Yeah. Um, Andre Stoika, who's like the current voice of Mister Whitaker, he did the did he do the owl for Pooh's Corner or was that for? No, that was Hal Smith. Oh, okay. This is a long time. That was back in 1983, 84. I know Andre Stoika did the owl for a little bit, and then he was also the Keebler Cookie Elf. Yeah, because he kind of took over for Hal and a lot of things after mm. Hal passed away. Uh, the modern entertainment industry has revealed itself to be full of darkness, especially in recent years. Uh, do you think it is still possible for God to use entertainment for good? And if so, how have you seen Christ reveal himself in the industry? Oh, my goodness. That's a bit of a loaded question. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know what? The whole world is dark. If you read your Bible, okay, it's not just the entertainment industry. Yeah, that's true. And yeah, there are a lot of actors and people in the industry who are believers. And they're doing so many things. You know, you know God uses... He used a donkey, so why the heck can't he use, you know, the entertainment industry? I mean, look, The Chosen is doing so well. Butch Hartman has a new cartoon called The Garden that I'm blessed to work on. That's, a you know, a Christian show for kids. Odyssey, you know, people... Pe mm, I still I get emails from people and meet people all the time who maybe grew up on it. Maybe they're, you know come back to the show that, you know, later on in life as adults or remember things that we we did. That's entertainment, right? And, and mm -hmm. it sticks with them. When people say things like that, I feel like, you know, if you went to a plumber's convention, do you think there's some dark and nefarious things going on in the hotel? Probably, you know. I mean, it doesn't matter. People are people. And yeah, we have a we have this wonderful opportunity. You could call it a responsibility too to to produce good um, entertainment for people that's uplifting. But our responsibility as Christians, I believe, is individual. Do you smile at your neighbor? Are you nice to your brothers and sisters? You know, are you there? You know, you start there, and that's where you really show your faith and then yeah. it just grows from there right i mean sorry but i That's you know okay. parents you know they'll say should we send our kid to hollywood i'm like well you know are you gonna have them only work if they're if they're an architect find a purely christian architect firm you know and i think god calls us to be light in the world wherever we're planted whatever we're doing so I hope that answers your question. 
It does, and I want to. I want to apologize. I didn't mean for the question to come up as like insensitive. No, no, or... people ask me. I'm glad you did because people think that, and I love to share my opinion about it because, yeah, yeah I mean, there's all kinds of na stuff going on, you know. But we have to be there for people who've been victimized as individuals to love and care for them, you know. Every you talk to everybody, probably most people have somebody in their family that's like done something not so nice. So how do we respond to those people, and how do we respond to the people who've had to be victims of whatever those people have done? You know, yeah, that's the stuff we're called to do, and I don't think it's necessarily just Hollywood. You know, people who have a lot of money sometimes use it badly a lot of people have a lot of money use it for good yeah I, I know i've definitely done some things i'm not proud of myself um, we all do so what does god call us to do in any of those situations you know it's easy to point fingers but christians i think are i've heard this quote and i'm sure i'm saying it wrong but christians are like the only group that that eats their own yeah. We're always looking to find what people do wrong and I don't think that's Jesus's message. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, that I I like I think that that needed to be said. Um so I I appreciate you like saying that. I don't mind you asking the question at all because I feel like people are it's always in the back of their minds and we need to be honest. Yeah. Um, what is your favorite role that you have ever played or like your favorite role so far? Oh, Connie. Connie? Adventures in Odyssey. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like my sec. Look, I'm wearing my Odyssey shirt. I wear yeah. it all the time. <laughs> um, it's just such a blessing and it makes people so happy. And, um, and, and I think the people who listen are like family. So I'm thankful for that. And the people I work with are like my family. I mean, how wonderful. Unless you're like a member of the Rolling Stones, how often do you work with the same people for 36 years, right? That's crazy that it's been like 36 years and the show is like, it's coming on up on its like 76th album or I guess season. Something like that. We're recording in a couple of weeks. <clears throat> I'm lucky I get to be in two episodes. I'm not in all of them, obviously. Yeah. Um, I'm excited about that. I'm trying to figure out if there's anybody listening who is a booking agent. Phil Lawler, Will Ryan, and I created something called Fort Blanket Review, and unfortunately, Will's no longer with us. But we like to bring radio theater and our characters to smaller venues, do some live theater, meet and greet people, and that's our that's what we want to do. I was actually texting Phil this morning. I'm like, we got to try to do this again but the thing is we don't know how to book ourselves anywhere so anybody's yeah. listening reach out got any ideas let us know all righty uh what type of music do you enjoy do you have a favorite piece or artist that you're particularly fond of uh van morrison van morrison huh? i don't think i've heard of him what kind of what kind of music does he do he does uplifting uh, inspirational, fun. He's been around since like the sixties. Oh wow! I see him this summer at a concert in September. Yeah, uh, I I just he and he's written a lot of songs about God, but he's not a Christian artist. So, mm -hmm. um, oh Van Morrison's great, and and uh, I, I love Southern rock. Um, we went to see John Fogerty from who. I don't know if you've ever heard of Creedence Clearwater, but he started that band, and that was an amazing concert. I the name sounds familiar. And my husband's in a band, so I guess I should say. Oh, awesome. Uh, yes, he has a band. He's in a band called Kissed Alive. He's a musician. He plays, and they and I love to watch their, them play, too. Do Does your husband's band have, like, a Spotify or, like, a SoundCloud or well, somewhere they can? Well, they're a tribute band to oh. Kiss. So people often look at my posts and say, why is she posting pictures of Kiss? But I'm not. I'm posting pictures of my husband's tribute band. This is like the the metal the metal band? 
Yeah, but they're not really metal. Oh, I didn't they're know that. metal, but they are, uh, yeah, seven inch heels and lots of makeup. <laughs> yeah. I, I've seen the pictures of like the like Kiss fans. I guess their their fans are called Juggalos. Um, I've never heard that. That's like the I guess the the term that I've heard used for like the fandom. Um, I never it's heard an that. interesting term, but it's like the like the white face paint with like the black eye eyeliner and. I don't know. I don't know, but they're uh, they're a tribute to Kiss. So nice. Yeah. All right, uh, next question. What is your favorite section from the Bible and why? Oh, I like, I like James. I think James has a lot of practical information, mm -hmm. um, application in it, if I'm correct, <laughs> if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah. What about you? That's a good question. Uh, I actually, I'm not sure. Um, I've been trying to like go through and read the Bible from the beginning. And right now I'm stuck in numbers. Um, so I just got past the part where uh, Aaron passed away on, on uh, I forgot the name of the mountain. It was like Mount Horeb or some, something like that. Um, but I'm, I'm trying to like actually like get through it from the beginning this time. I've never read it all the way through. Yeah. It's good. It's so funny that you mentioned that because I just pulled my first Bible off the shelf and I was reading because it's I, I get my eyes get tired of reading online and all our mm -hmm. notes in church are on the phone. So I was I just opened up my Bible and the first one I had was just a it almost looked like a Bible from uh, the back of a pew. So I had to buy like stickers to label where the chapters, you know, the uh, the books, different books were. Sometimes I'll read it and then sometimes I'll just listen to it as like an audio book. Um, yeah, you I, can go on version and listen to any, oh, so many different translations and hear them. They've been recorded. So we listen to, we there's a, um, um, a website called Hebrew for, Qu for Christians and it has all the Torah portions plus New Testament reading. So we listen mm -hmm. to that every day. I the like uh, I've been I've been learning a lot about like the well not a lot but like I, I've kind of like I I was surprised to find out that like Jesus wasn't you know Jesus's real name it was uh, his his name I guess in the Hebrew tongue is Yeshua Yeshua, um, Yeshua and I I didn't know that so it, it was interesting to go and like find out like what the actual words are it's so important. The church I go to, our pastor, they teach Hebrew roots. So, you know, the, the, one of the things they like to say is John wasn't a Baptist, Mary wasn't a Catholic, and Jesus wasn't a Christian. They were all Jews. Yeah. And so to understand the Bible in context is so important. Um, and to understand who Jesus is and since the beginning of time is just makes him so much more relevant and so awesome you went to you went with your husband a couple weeks a uh, couple months ago to like you said israel mm -hmm. um what was that like were there any like what what were some highlights of the trip going to the sea of galilee was amazing and then they have this incredible dessert made with halloumi cheese <laughs> I just bought some this week to try to fry it myself. There's this cheese that comes from Greece and, uh, you know, that whole area. <laughs> and it, you can heat it up. I know this isn't probably what you wanted to hear. But oh, no, this is. Melt. I... <laughs> it's really chewy and it's so good. And they make this dessert. I can't think of the name of it. But it's like this incredible dessert with shredded coconut and cheese in the middle and honey and... That sounds really it was, good. It was amazing going to Jerusalem, seeing, uh, you know, all the uh, sites. David's tomb. David still has a like a crypt in Jerusalem. Oh, that's interesting. I know, the Garden of Gethsemane. Um, we went to, and, and we went to. Um, Where did they find the Dead Sea Scrolls? Uh, Qumran. 
Come on. We went there. That was so interesting. And the we went to the Dead Sea. Um, I brought back salt balls from the Dead Sea. Um, it, the whole trip was interesting. Seeing where stand, seeing a pulpit, standing at a pulpit where Jesus actually probably delivered a sermon uh, in uh, Capernaum was incredible um that stuff is still there and people preserve it and it's it's great that's amazing that like people still preserve like even 2000 years later like people still preserve that stuff that's really yeah, that's pull awesome those stuff down if it's 40 years old you know we were yeah. in jericho do you know the city of jericho is the only the oldest city still like functioning as a city in the world and it's like ten thousand years old oh really mm -hmm. so was jericho like is it is that like the same jericho that like was in the bible or yeah oh i didn't know that i didn't know they rebuilt it <laughs> well they um yeah i think it was yeah i think I'm talking about jericho google it I, I will. I'm not going to, I'm not going to Google it right now. I'm, but I, I, they have the fountain there that I think it was Elijah threw the stick in and made the water sweet. It's still there. We ate at a restaurant that was there. I didn't actually get to go inside of Jericho that we just stopped and had lunch, but at this fountain and been there a long, long time. Nice. All right. So I've got to with your head. Oh, it does. <laughs> just How does in there? Is it just like a surreal experience being there after like reading about the places in the Bible, or yeah, it's 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 really great. Yeah, to have to see it in front of your face and try to, you know, put things in the right perspective, even geographically. Yeah. Well, uh, we've got two more questions. Uh, this next one is from, uh, well, oh, yeah, two more questions. Uh, this next one is from Jack Getschman, uh, who also is a friend of mine who runs a YouTube channel. He is wondering, uh, will you be returning for the Totally Spies reboot? No. Oh, darn. They didn't. Yeah, I asked. That's... I begged. I pleaded, but no. It's... They've been like recasting a lot of reboots. Uh, they did that with the Powerpuff Girls a few years ago. Um, yeah, they just they always said, "Well, we're going to do it a little differently," which is sad for us who are still alive and would love mm -hmm. to do our characters. But they already took Totally Spies away from us when they went to Canada after the first two seasons. So, you know. There were, so were you, did you guys only do like the first two seasons and then there were others oh, that were done by? I, me and Jess Harnell only did the first two seasons and then two of the actresses had like Canadian citizenship so they could do their characters. Oh, Jess Harnell was in it? To, mm -hmm, he was Jerry. That's how I met him and brought him to Odyssey. Oh, that's awesome. Do you have any tips or advice for aspiring artists or actors who wish to enter the industry? Well, there is so much information online. It's so much it's so much easier to find out stuff and find communities and support and all the resources you need are out there. So it's up to you to dig around and figure out what's going on. Um, practice your skills, do improv training, especially if you want to be in cartoons read out loud. I always say read kids books, picture books out loud. So there's lots of characters you can give voices to in picture books. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, there's go to a voiceover conference if you can, you'll learn so much in a weekend um, and meet people. So that, that's what I advise. Those are some really good tips. Um, I've actually, I've, I've tried like reading books out loud and I always feel kind of silly doing it. So yeah. It's... Well, if you don't have fun doing it, you should do something else. But I heard your That's voice. True. You did the announcement for our 4th of July uh, song that you mm -hmm. animated. Will and I sang it and you animated it like vegetables singing and you did the opening and I thought you did a great job. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you. Um, I've actually, I, I've done like, I've done voice work before, 
Um, I've never done paid work, but I've done like parodies and stuff for the past few years. Um, that's been fun. All good. You know what? If you if you do what you love, you, you got you know if you love it, more stuff will happen, right? Yeah, I'm actually looking at going into uh, Job Corps, um, which is like a government work program. Um, and so the field that I want to enter is uh, forestry because I really like I, I like wildlife. Oh, that's great. Um, but yeah, I think you'll could... narrate. You know the videos they play at the ranger station. Maybe. Who knows? Um, well, thank you very much, Katie Lee, for taking uh, time out of your day to uh, do this interview. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you, Joel Radford, for having me. Yeah, I, I, I don't really know how to close this. So. Well, how about we just say, see you later. All right, see you well, later. How about tell you later? Tell you later, um, <laughs> which on... And again, the the podcast tell you later will be in uh, the description of this video. Um, yes, so join us and consider being a patron if you'd like to. If you'd like to check that out, uh, the links to both the Patreon uh, and her YouTube channel will be down below. Uh, and then I think there's also going to be a copy of this interview uh, on Tell You Later as well. So that's um, yes, yes. Well, at least on for our patrons, um, for the, I yeah. will be in uh, Pennsylvania. In November, no, September at RetroCon. So if anybody's listening from there, come say hi. All righty. Well, thank you so much and uh, have a great day, everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Yep. Bye, everybody. Hi, I'm Katie. And I'm Will. And we're taking a break from our Patreon-supported Tell You Later show to do this little song for you in celebration of, of, of something that's uh, very uh, popular in the United States of America. National holiday. Mm-hmm. And it goes, the song, this brand new song goes like this. High in the sky, the rockets will fly. Yay! Happy Uncle Sammy Day. Listen, you'll hear the citizens cheer. Yay! Happy Uncle Sammy Day. Who's Sammy Day? Now some folks call it July the 4th. Ooh. Others say the 4th of July. That's what I say. But through the whole USA, you'll hear people say, Happy, Happy Uncle, Uncle Sammy, Sammy Day. Day. All right, let's hear it. Happy Uncle Sammy Day!